Hello, Astro Lover. Before we get into this week's hot cosmic weather, I want to share with you that my secret is out. She's out into the world, and if you missed the announcement on social media or you're not on the newsletter just yet, before we jump in, I just want to tell you, put it in your ear, that this September, the first ever Drunk Astrology Retreat is taking place, baby. It's called Raise Your Vibe 2024, and it is happening between September 26th and the 30th this friggin' year. All right, so pre-registration is now live, (sighs) and you can find the information in the link in the bio, not the link in the bio, Graham, in the show notes. I'm acting like this is Instagrams. Um, In the show notes, so just scroll down on the episode page here. You're going to find a whole bunch of resources for you there, but the link to pre-register, it's got all the information As of right now, we are going to be, we know for sure, the retreat is taking place in Southern California, somewhere between Los Angeles and San Diego. The dates are September 26th through the 30th. Pre-registration is going to be the best offer, but it's going to go away this week, and then we'll shift over into early bird. Okay, so if you hear this and you go to that, and you go to my site and you see Enough information to where you're like, hell yeah, I know I want to go. Pre-registration is going to be your best rate. And then things will start going up as we move into the next phases of this baby. So I hope to see you there. This is going to be epic already. We have two signups as of this recording. And um, I just can't wait. I can't wait. I guess I'll just say, too, that there's a max of 15 people. Okay, so we've got two already signed up. I've had a lot of people hit me up with interest. So if everybody who says they're interested signs up, we're at capacity. So if you know you want to come, hop on that pre-registration. Get the best rate, baby. If you have any questions, uh, please hit me up. There is a contact form on DrunkAstro.com. And uh, all right. That's it. I just wanted to tell you. Let's hop in to this week, baby. Ooh, wee, astro lovers. We are riding on the eclipse highway today. And this week and next week. And baby, baby, baby. Or as Brandy would say, baby, baby. Baby, baby, don't you know that you're so fine? Yeah, yeah. Baby! Um, uh, the, the events, the ahas, the things that are transpiring around you and within you, are they not real AF? Are they not potent AF? Do you see and are you experiencing how eclipses come in like a thief in the night and they turn on the light or they turn off the light and they they like literally can just change your course, change your direction, change everything like that. Just a little a snap, just like that. It can be a text, it can be an email, it can be a phone call, it can be an interaction, it can be anything. The spectrum of Eclipse experiences are vast, but you can see them in the headlines. Um, The princess saying that she has cancer? Like, whoa, okay, biggie, and all the headlines surrounding the U.S.'s presidential run this year i mean it just and then my personal life um the lives of those around me just your lives because some of you have been really good about sending me you know updates phone calls text messages emails and dms i see them i you know i've been talking to most of you Uh, baby (laughs) whoa now 
something to, something to note, and I'm pretty sure I mentioned this at some point over the last few weeks that we've been in this whole eclipse experience. But something to keep in mind. Eclipses can give us this false sense of urgency. Now, only you will know if it's false or not. But eclipses can really just, when we're riding on the highway, like we are as of this Monday, the 25th. By the way, this is the episode for the week of March 25th through the 31st. Last week of the month, y'all. Q1, we're wrapping up that baby. But eclipses can, they can shift us and awaken us and enlighten us in a way where all of a sudden, I have to do this. If I don't do this, things just, you know, life falls apart or... I just, I can't even exist like this. This is insane. And there are some instances, and this is when I say, only you know what's really urgent for you and what's not. But they can give us this false sense that everything has to happen all at once right now. And that's not always the case. So I just want you to keep in mind. And you know what? I'll go ahead and share my experience with you. Um, in this sense, Herman and I, of course, we we now live together officially. We we entered this eclipse season. You know, we made our our big move just before eclipses. Um, we really entered the season, but you know, definitely an eclipse moment, especially for our relationship. So we started, though. You know, this is us living. You know, with our two dogs in a studio apartment. We're definitely not crammed, but we definitely need more space. So last week we began our hunt and we, you know, we set up um, a tour of a space that we really liked on Zillow and we went and I mean, I for sure was like, oh my God, I can see this being a thing. This, the first place that we looked at, was like, oh my God, this is it. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Oh my God, it's a little small, but the backyard is private. The dogs are going to love it. The things that we can do. And, you know, Herman's a designer. So I'm just like, oh my God, you would turn this place out. This would be amazing. It's all updated and it's all nice and it's all new. And we wanted to stay in the area, one, because if you know, if you're familiar at all with LA and its traffic, we were on the complete opposite side of town from where we live right now. And so... By the time, you know, so we were like, okay, well, let's go eat in the area. Let's go drive around the area. We had compiled a list, of course, you know, two earth signs, compiled a list of places that, you know, we had their addresses. So let's go drive by. Let's see if we like the locations. Let's see if we want to set up a tour. And part of the, the evening, I was like in my head, like, that was the place. That was the one. It has to be. Place number one. It's got to be. And I felt right. I can vision. I did have visions. I will say I did have visions. Um, you know, all, all of these things. And by the time we got home, we started talking more and more about like, okay, well, I'm realizing that, you know, here are the light bulb moments I had. I really like having... Um, like a whole yard. I like having a, in my own space, like it being like, even though what we looked at was like a guest home, but it was like, it had its completely separate entrance. It had its own backyard, which was beautiful, giant fig tree in the back. Like it was just so magical the gardening twice a month and that the owner takes care of like all of these things. And I was just like, it has to be that one. It has to be that one. And then I was like, oh, the trickery of eclipses. We aren't even in, especially as of last week, we're not even in the 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 highway yet. We're not even riding on the highway of eclipses yet. And I'm already like making my mind up like this is it. And, and, and too, when we, when we started like putting bullet points down, it didn't even make sense for us right now because they want to move in of April 15th. Well, we're not really ready to move until at least May 1st, maybe even June 1st. 
And then it was like, well, let's look at the financials of that. That means I'd have to put in my 30-day notice at this place, like now. And we're not we're not ready for that. We're, we don't have everything together in order to like make that happen. So I was like, oh, eclipses, 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 eclipses. They brought, they turned the light on. The aha moments of like what was negotiable in our space together and what are the non-negotiables. I had a list uh, already, but I we learned more that day. And so like putting those things together, like, all right, now we have more information. Even though they want April 15th, if, we, if it ends up being that place, that first place that we looked at, if it does, and it's still available when we're ready to make a decision, then that's when we'll find out. But we have a whole nother, we got to get through April to get on the other side of eclipses. And the other thing that's going on that's really relevant to all of this right now, Mercury friggin' retrograde. We are in the shadow, baby. So when we're in the pre-shadow, we're in the awareness phase of the retrograde experience. So it was all the light bulbs coming off. Oh, what are you becoming aware of right now? We're in this story for a while. And now we've got Mercury retrograde on top of eclipses. So eclipses give us that urgency like now, now, now. Mercury retrograde's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's actually kind of a blessing in disguise, albeit coming with the typical Mercury retrograde annoyances. <sighs> Delayed plans, forgot plans, uh, being taking an extra an hour to get someplace that should only take 20 minutes, travel delays, travel cancellations, flight issues, plane issues. I mean, haven't we been seeing all this story about the Boeing situations? I mean, that is just insane in itself. Um, but Mercury rules anything with the battery. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw last week, I woke up day two of now I because I you know how I always tell you that Mercury retrograde shadows are classically worse dot com for me than the actual retrogrades. And Proving that theory yet again. <laughs> I, I get, I prove the theory three times a year, sometimes four depending on the year, but we always get at least three Mercury retrogrades. Um, I woke up day two of shadow and <laughs> my entire desktop was wiped, completely wiped. And like, now, so we're talking about when I say, the desktop was wiped. We're talking about my client folders because I have every single one of my clients. I have a dedicated folder. I've got all the, the birth charts, the birth information. Like I got everything that I need for our readings and our sessions, yearlies, everything. I've got all the brand assets. I've got all these like photos from past photo shoots and things like with the 2024 fashion and astrology magazine that I put out this year, like everything that is very important to me as it lives on the desktop, all gone. Three and a half hours. My whole morning got derailed by three and a half hours because I was trying and I was on a mad manhunt to find where everything was. Now, thankfully, thanks to Herman and thanks to a Quora forum, I was able to recover everything that I couldn't find, but that's how this stuff can. This is how it can happen. There was no, there was nothing that took place in that laptop's life. Nothing took place in the twenty four hours leading up to that happening. Nothing abnormal took place. Nothing happened. Just gone. Just goodbye. Stay with us. We'll be right back. There's like no other like crazy time than having eclipses, which are wild, spontaneous course corrections that come out of the blue, that come like big epiphanies and ahas and turning points, once-in-a-lifetime opportunities, deaths, the spectrum is real. But then when you smack a Mercury retrograde in the friggin' middle of the eclipse experience, 
That's a lot of energy that can make you feel benoodles. Bethunery runs amok. So this is exactly why I recorded a bonus episode for all my Daily Dose of Stars subscribers that is tracking this Mercury retrograde. Did you know that every Mercury retrograde has a purpose? It has a point. And no, this is not the like social media version of like Mercury retrograde is meant to like slow down and review all your RE words. That is all very much true. However, what social media folks out there aren't teaching you or aren't showing you, at least the ones that I've been seeing, are that based on the conversations Mercury's having during his retrogrades, that's where you find the sweet sauce. That's where you find the meaning and the purpose of the retrograde. Okay? So if you're not a Daily Dose subscriber, I highly, highly, highly encourage you to consider that monthly investment. It's $10. Because you're going, it's going to make the universe make sense during a lot of, of cosmic volatility. Okay? So I just wanted to tell you that because there's a bonus episode there for all the subscribers breaking down exactly what this retrograde is and guidance for all 12 signs, sun, moon, and rising. So come on over. Make sense of the potential mess that might be happening around and or within you. And I'll see you over there. So, yeah, that was a thing. (laughs) So if you, you know, if you're having any um, Mercury retrograde shadow questions, be sure that you um, come over into the Daily Dose community for that bonus episode, because that is going to help you big time. Um, Check out the show notes for all of that. Um, This week, we actually have a... It's not a quiet week at all, but in terms of the length of this podcast, it's quiet because we're only reporting on the eclipse and one other planetary aspect. So, you know, that's, you know, breathe, breathe, breathe. That is going to be your saving grace as you move through the Eclipse Highway energy. You're going to want to have your grounding practices like you're going to want to ground them. All right. And when I say that, I mean, make them consistent. So if you're if you're a meditator, meditate every day. If you are like me and you pull a card every day, pull a card. If you do yoga, do yoga. If you practice mindfulness, like make sure you are having your mindfulness practice very intentional every single day. When energy, because it's not necessarily like life feels chaotic to you. Some of you, I know, have your whole realities have been just completely up, up, turned upside down. So you are in a new reality and that consistency, that grounding is going to help you move through outer chaos to bring inner stillness. But for others of you who are kind of like listening and like, I don't know, eclipses aren't really doing much. You know, I don't know. It's like, I'm just kind of like, you know, like I'm just kind of here. Part of that is your eclipse. Because eclipses can very much happen internally. Turning the light on or off is very much an internal experience. And the way that you are going to tune in to your message is through consistent practice. So whatever that means for you, do that. Do that, do that, do that. Pulling a card every single day has been a game changer for me. That is going to segue me into some pew, 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 some special little announcements. 
This is the last week to book your yearly readings. You hear me? The last week, your final week for your 2024 custom yearly readings. So make sure you either go to drunkastro.com or you go to the show notes and you click there for your reading. Get that in the books because after Sunday, which is also Easter Sunday, after Sunday, they go away until 2025. Okay, so there's that. Number two of special news that I want to share with you, I have been confirmed or allowed. I don't really know what the what the circumstances are, but I was given the opportunity to be an Amazon influencer. So yours truly has taken that as a way and as an opportunity to create a storefront with all of my favorite spiritual tools. Because a lot of you have reached out to me over the past several years saying, you know, what do I recommend? What books do I recommend? What decks do I recommend? What journals do I recommend? You know, you've really, you've really been curious about expanding your spiritual practice. Well, eclipses are the perfect time to do that. So I have put this storefront together. There is a section in the show notes dedicated and with a direct link to that storefront. And Go go peruse the, the cart. It's on Amazon, so you get the stuff relatively quick. But I've got my favorite Oracle card decks, my favorite tarot decks, my favorite spiritual books slash astrology books. All of the my faves are there. Some of those books are by authors that were a part of my certification route. So I haven't read all of the books that are in there, but I know or have experienced the teachers, and I know that they are legit. So just know that everything in there, um, I've had some sort of interaction, relationship with the decks, or a lot of the decks that I own myself, that I plan on purchasing myself. Um, so check that out. And any time you need... Some like a, anytime you want to add to your spiritual arsenal, that's what that link is there for. So it lives in the show notes on the podcast library, my link in bio on Instagram. It's even on in the footer of drunkastro.com. So anytime you need a little assistance, um, that's what that is there for. And also just feel free to reach out to me if you need any guidance. I've helped so many people since launching that storefront. Just kind of say like, oh, if you're for, if you're new to readings. Unless you're really strongly called to tarot, I recommend Oracle. And then we can talk about, you know, what Oracle decks might vibe with you best. Okay? So that's pew, 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 pow, bow, 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 bow. That's it for the special news. So let's just talk about this Libra full moon lunar eclipse. It takes place at midnight Pacific Standard Time on Monday March 25th at 5 degrees, 7 minutes of Libra. So you want to check Libra, Aries, Cancer, and Capricorn in your chart. All the cardinal signs. Where do those signs fall in your chart? Whether you have planets, whether you have house placements. Maybe it's your one of those are your rising sign or your midheaven, your descendant, your IC. But just find those, find those signs and particularly look for two degrees to eight degrees of Libra for sure, Aries for sure, and then Cancer Capricorn for good measure. There are deeper astro geeky reasons why I'm having you look at all the cardinal signs. Way too much to throw at you in this podcast um, because it can get a little can get a little um, tedious and a little heady. And I don't want you to do that. The eclipses are heady enough. <laughs> are they not? But take a look. Um, because those are the areas of your chart where this full moon lunar eclipse is going to be really active. If you've got anything on or near that 2 to 8 degree axis of the cardinals, Aries, Libra, Cancer, Capricorn, then you can expect that if you haven't experienced already... 
that the eclipse season is bringing out those turning points galore. You know, I've also done a um, a good breakdown of this month and this eclipse energy and another one of the bonus episodes of this month, the monthly report for Daily Dose of Stars subscribers. So it'd be good if you, if you really want to dive into this a little bit more um, to jump into that community and listen to those bonus episodes. Um, but let's let's just talk about this. Let's break this down. A full moon. So what are full moons? They are endings, they're closures, they're turning points, and they are huge for moments of forgiveness. Now, let me just say this, and that there's a huge relationship story and how the relationship to ourselves and our relationship to the other and the other fill in the blank. That could be romantic, it could be a friendship, it could be a business partner, it could be a relationship to a family member. But we're having some big epiphanies, big course corrections, and the universe is running amok here in this kind of energy. That full moon, the, the closures, the turning points, the forgiveness. Um, but we're also having to look at codependency, projection. And here's a big one that's been coming up, and I've shared this in, uh, across platforms, um, especially in the yearly readings. It's been coming so much in everyone's yearly readings that I've just decided to like make this a broader message just for everyone. Because the, the nodes, right? The nodes are in Aries, Libra, and the nodes are where we track the eclipses. Aries, North Node in Aries is learning and hungry for more self-sovereignty, independence, courage, and bravery. The Libra South Node is having to, we're having to let go of relationships that kind of like keep us, potentially, keep us from being more brave, being more active, being more independent. So South Node in Libra is where we have to release codependency. We have to release projection that we might be putting onto others, but also that they might be putting onto us. But the big message that I want you to consider, and you're more than likely you've heard me say this before, but I'm going to reiterate because we're riding on the Eclipse Highway. Be on the lookout for self-betrayal and or sacrifice disguising itself as compromise we have been taught socially that relationships require compromise and that's true relationships do require compromise herman and i are in the middle of that right now compromising and saying what are our non-negotiables for our new place right that's compromise but it's when we betray ourselves, when we betray that little whisper in the back of our spirit, the back of our mind, or whether we feel it in our bodies, when we are actively going against our own truths and saying that that is compromise for love or that is compromise for relationship, that is compromise so that I stay in this dynamic, this relationship, whatever kind of relationship it is, that's betraying yourself. That's not compromise. Compromise should still feel good. It should not feel like you're giving up a part of yourself. Let me say that one more time. Compromise should still feel good. It should not feel like you're giving up a part of yourself. Okay? So I want you to keep that in mind. Because this Aries Libra stuff, it's got us all looking at, hopefully, ourselves in the mirror. Right? Like, oh, man. I'm having a big epiphany about that. 
I need to need to examine that a little bit further. Maybe with the therapist, maybe with a counselor, maybe with a best friend, maybe with a reader, maybe with a healer. Whatever you choose, maybe through a consistent spiritual practice. You know, if you don't have one, create one. That storefront is going to serve you in that way. Um, and if you have any questions about just what other methods you might want to explore, or you might feel called to explore, reach out. Let's talk about it. That's probably one of the biggest messages that I'm seeing in the Eclipse experience right now, or just ever since the nodes switched into Aries Libra last summer and started, we started getting these whispers of like, huh, is that right? Or like, hmm, is that weird? Is that off? So, you know, here we are at the turning point of this Aries Libra story. A chapter two of a story that began last year. Now, as far as this eclipse experience goes with alongside your Manifest Big in 2024 journal. Now, you know that I am a fan of taking a spiritual sabbatical. During eclipses, I have seen in time and time again that it is not the time to call in new things. It is the time to accelerate. Like you press on that accelerator while you're driving on the Eclipse Highway with the map you have already drawn out, the map you have already created at the top of this year or whenever you started working in your Manifest Big in 2024 journal. If you don't have that yet, again, the show notes has the link there for you to go. It's a free download and it's a game changer. I'm telling you, absolute game changer. So that's your map. You're going to continue to drive during the eclipse highway. You're going to drive on that baby with that map that you've already put in motion. Now, things that are in alignment with what your higher self, what the universe, what God, what divinity, what source, however you want to call it, him or her, um, whatever's in alignment, Eclipses can catapult that and those, those destinations forward. They can put you on a fast forward in terms of whatever is on, on course for you. However, if you're a little off course or if you've been a little off course, if you've been off-roading for a little while, eclipses might make you pull over for a little pit stop and reevaluation. And a little reconfiguring of like, is this is this my final destination? And that you're meant to contemplate. Don't let that false sense of urgency make you feel like you got to make the decision right here, right now. Don't let don't let that happen. It might be a little rest stop, a little pit stop, or it might be a complete about face. <laughs> Okay, eclipses might just take a look at that map and go, "Oh, that's real cute. You real cute for thinking that that's what that's what we were gonna do, and that that's what you were meant to do." <laughs> Whip that bitch around. <laughs> so you might have been, you might have gone into eclipses going one direction, and then all of a sudden you got turned about and turned around, and you might feel a little disoriented. This week and next week, um, if you haven't already been in that mode. Um, and that's okay. It's totally okay. Use the Mercury retrograde as that mental break, as that mental pause for like anywhere you're feeling that urgency. And, and when you really like take a step back and reflect, you're like, oh, if you realize like, oh, I don't really have to make this like epic decision like right now if it's not a must then i can i will encourage you to embrace mercury's retrograde and pause let your mind rest let your body rest let your let your somatic self like you know your, like who somatic healing is real and that might be real helpful and beneficial during this time. Now, other than that, all we got to talk about is Thursday. (laughs) 
Venus is in Pisces. She's super romantic. She's very happy in Pisces. Um, she can have the rose-colored glasses on. So all these like revelations on the relationship front, keep that in mind. Venus may be a little delusional, although she's happy as a camper because she can be in pure romantic bliss. She has a sextile to Uranus at 6.58 a.m. Pacific on Thursday, March 28th. So that is some kind of innovation. That is some kind of relationship excitement. Um, something picking up. Um, a new perspective. It could be a great day for perspective. And whether that's coming from an outside source, because it can with Venus in her relationship mode, it can be revelations coming through if we i don't know why lately i i'm like entertaining the the more traditional astrology but using venus as um as a female figure um although you know astrology really needs to update its lingo because venus can be every much a gay man as it can be a female or a female identifying person, you know? So astrology has got a way to go. And I think that's kind of why I, I kind of like mm, side eye, you know, some of the, like the hardcore traditionalist, but in tradition, Venus is, is these, re this revelation can come through a conversation with um, a female figure, female identifying person, or, Hey, maybe it's your gay astrologer. <laughs> Um, but Thursday the 28th is a day to keep that in mind. And that's it, folks. Um, there's no other planetary action this week. Most of the times I find that this is what happens during eclipses. They they want to help us out <laughs> and say, you know what? We're going to give you the time, energy, and space to ground yourself you know um so just stay stay tuned stay tuned in your body stay tuned into um your own experience but you know also be mindful of the experiences around you because um, if it's not you directly um it can very much be your your outside reality okay so outside chaos equals a call for inner stillness i'll leave you on that note and i will see you next week and of course I'll see you throughout Instagram. I'll see you in your inbox. And until next time, happy Good Friday to those who celebrate Easter. Happy Easter Sunday on the 31st. And um, yeah, last week of the of first quarter. Crazy. All right. See you next time. Bye. Last little thing before you go. On Monday, March 25th, the same day as the Libra Full Moon Lunar Eclipse, I'm going to be doing my second round of Oracle Card readings on Instagram Live at 12.15 Pacific. Now, you don't have to be present for the live. Um, you can send your donation, and I'll add your name to the list, and I will do your reading on live, and then I'll post the live on my feed, and I will put in the caption your name, like whoever's names as a, as a part of each live, because they go over an hour. So I do the first hour, second hour, third hour, however long it takes to get through all the readings. But I post the lives separate of each other. And I put everyone's name that's in that live in the caption. Okay, so it's happening. You can send donations via Venmo at Drunk Astrology or Zelle, which is my email, Graham. G-R-A-H-A-M at DrunkAstro.com. And when I have your donation, I will add you to the list. Um, there's a whole structure. 10 bucks for one card, 20 bucks for two cards, 30 bucks for three cards, and a five-card full spread is a $50 donation. Um, I'm going to max this live at 20 people. So I will, as they come in, I will just create that list. So if you want to be a part of that, please do. If you have any questions, send me a DM on Instagram um, or an email. Either way, works for me, works for you, and I'll see you Monday.